everyone, I'm Lauren and welcome back to my channel. This is Lights and Lavender where we talk about all things books and my own writing journey and today I'm going through my five best books of 2020. <laughs> So I know that we're like a month into 2021 and I've not done my best of or my worst of books but I only managed to get through 44 books in 2020 which I think is good going for me. I, that's the most I've read in maybe the past 10 years. Um, I had a lot of time to not read when I was at university because there was a lot of required texts and work that just took up the time and I don't know I've just never really put much of a focus on it. So I thought instead of doing like my five star reads or my top ten or whatever I'd just do the five books that I really enjoyed so these might have surprised me with how much I enjoyed them but I thought that was the best way to go about it. I've not included any rereads on this list just because I wanted it to be fair because otherwise the top book would have been Jurassic Park but we need to stop talking about that book. There's a video on my adaptations for that if you want to go and watch it and check that one out but I just I couldn't do it because I know that that would hit because I love that book so much. It's such a great book and let's stop talking about that now. So the first book that is on this list is To Kill a Kingdom by Alexandra Cristo. I really really enjoyed this book. I didn't really know anything about it going into it. I only picked it up because it was on an audible sale and I'd received a mug with some of the text on there from a fairy loot subscription box and I thought mm, this seems like something that people are enjoying so it's on the sale I'll try it and see what it is and I was absolutely blown away by it I loved every second I loved the way that Lyra and Elliot I can't remember his name! <laughs> I've read too many books since then. Um, the way that the two main characters played up against each other and the way that their relationship grew and developed over the course of the book, I really really enjoyed it. I loved the Little Mermaid vibes from that and I loved the way that this retelling was done. I didn't realise it was a Little Mermaid retelling. I thought that it might have been something to do with that because when I got the mug I was confused, I didn't know who it was by but it looked like it was Ariel. So I was a little bit aware but I didn't realise just how much of it was going to be a retelling or how they've done it and I love the twists to it, I love the way that the sirens were uh, portrayed compared to mermaids. I did think it was interesting how they went down the siren route and I loved the sea witch element and I thought it was a really great book and it was definitely one of my favourite books of 2020. The next book that really surprised me and was a really good favourite of mine throughout 2020 was K-Pax by Jean Brewer. I didn't even know what this book was about. I had got it from a charity shop years ago and as part of my clearing off my shelves I thought I'm gonna read this one. It looks like a small one. It doesn't look like there's a sequel or it's a prequel or anything like that and I picked it up and I read it and I was blown away. I loved it. I loved the formatting of it. I loved that it was done as transcriptions of interviews between Jean Brewer or the doctor in this book and his psych patients. I thought that was a really great way of getting this story out there but I just find it really confusing that the main character, the doctor in it, was called Jean Brewer and I was really really confused and wondered if this was like semi-autobiographical or semi non-fiction because it just seemed really odd and the name of his wife in that book was the name of Jean Brewer's wife in real life and I I'm still not entirely convinced it was fully fictional but I did really enjoy the book. I later found out that there's a film um, that's been created from the back of this book but I have not watched it but I really enjoyed the book. I love the twist to it. I would say it's kind of like a psychological thriller maybe. I'm not really sure on its full sort of genre specification. It, yeah, it does seem very thrillery. There's like a mystery element to it, trying to figure out who K-Pax is. Uh, no, not K-Pax. That's the name of the planet. I'm trying to figure, oh, Moat, Moat. Trying to figure out who this person is because he doesn't have any red collection. He believes he is an alien from the planet K-Pax, and the name of the alien has escaped me. I can't remember what it is, but I thought that was a really interesting and intriguing piece of um, literature that I'd read. And I read that back in April, I think it was, and. I just, there's no words really. I would really recommend this book. It's so different to what you get nowadays and I love, like I said, I really, really love the way that this book was written in this transcription style method as well. My third favourite book or best book of 2020 was Natives by Akala. I really love the way that Akala pulls himself across in both his interviews, his YouTube videos, his music, everything. He is such a erudite person and I am in awe and I am completely envious of him. His way of with using words and his way of being able to communicate with people is just 
and it's on such another level. He's able to connect and create rapport with audiences and in his videos and his music and he's just able to get his point across succinctly a lot better than I'm doing currently and I really love that about him and that transcribed really well into the book that he wrote which is about his own upbringing as a half Jamaican, half Scottish? I think it's half Scottish. It might be a quarter Scottish, it's a quarter English but I think it's half Scottish and the way that his mum's side of the family, well his mum's dad kind of disowned his mum because she'd had a kiss with a Jamaican man and now they've got interracial kids and pretty much his granddad was very racist and it was interesting to see that sort of dynamic and how that had affected his family growing up. He writes about how he realised that his mum was white for the first time and how that then caused a huge disparity with him from how white people were treating him at school and in the street and then going home being like mum this white kid told me this and then realising that his mum is in essence this white kid and how that caused a bit of an issue with him when he was younger and that he has been able to work through that now but it's taken a while to sort of break down these ideals and I thought it was a really interesting sort of introspective look at his home life and how he has grown up and how his estate has developed and how his friends have grown up and I really thought it was interesting. It's not something you see a lot of. I think with a lot of issues within the UK things are buried down and hidden and in recent years these have been coming to the surface so I think this was a great book to read to show just how systemically racist the UK is as well. Um, that brought it to the forefront. I'd been meaning to read this for a while but I only managed to pick it up this year mainly because I've barely read in the past couple of years and I thought I really need to get around to this but I would really recommend both Akala's book Natives and his YouTube channel Akala Music where he has a lot of his own interviews on there and he goes into these same topics in a lot more detail. If you ever get the chance to go and see him do a talk as well I would really recommend that. I went to see him I think it was in 2018. Yeah in 2018 I went to see him give a speech talk lecture thing at the University of Sheffield as an event and blown away, just completely blown away with how he is able to put himself across in front of an audience and so envious of him to be honest because it's just it's just astounding at how good he is able to present these ideas and even though there's a lot of criticism against what he's talking about, it doesn't I don't want to say he doesn't care, but I think that makes him maybe stronger to get his point across and I'm so glad that I managed to stumble across him with my other half on a YouTube video. I think it was doing Fire in the Booth <laughs> uh, for Radio 1 Extra and ever since then, I think I was like 2017, it's just kind of snowballed and it, I just really love him. He's got a book out this year, which I am hoping to pre-order and get as well in April. But I digress. My fourth best book of the year was These Final Delights by Chloe Gong. I absolutely loved this. I felt it like it was a little bit iffy to start off with. It's Romeo and Juliet in 1920s Shanghai and it pretty much is Romeo and Juliet in 1920s Shanghai. It's classed as a retelling, but it seems more like an adaptation. I don't know. I don't know what like the actual differences are, but it is very, very similar, very close. It's been very closely transcribed to a 1920s Shanghai setting, and I think it has worked wonderfully. Uh, the only thing I dislike about this book is that there's a sequel to it, and I can't get the full story in one, but that's a different problem. I am hoping to read that when it comes out. But I really enjoyed this one. I love the way that Juliet's character was portrayed as a 1920s floppy girl, but also the heir to a gangster gang in Shanghai <laughs> and how Roma was a Russian from an opposite gang and they're fighting for turf, but then there's this crazy monster that's causing like craziness, literally sending people crazy throughout Shanghai and the working to understand the mystery behind it and seeing how the relationships played off and how the dynamics of the time affected the relationship. I thought it was a really interesting way to go and I really, really, really loved it. And my fifth best book of 2020 was Percy Jackson The Last Olympian by Rick Riordan. I, I absolutely loved it. It's my favourite of the series and i just blown away. I loved the ending to this entire series, loved the culmination to it. I liked how much time was spent on this portion of the book. I don't want to go into it too much because obviously it's the last in this Percy Jackson series and there's a lot of spoilers from the rest of it so even though it's been out around 10 years, maybe a little bit less, um, it's still a lot of people haven't read them so I don't want to <laughs> go into it too much but I did do a reading vlog if you want to go check that out 
but I really loved it. I loved the way that this book was done. I liked the ending for it. I liked how the prophecy is interlinked in this one and loved it. Absolutely loved it. Five stars from me. So what were your best books of 2020? Did you have any that I have had? Have you read any of the books that I've mentioned? If you have, what did you think to them? Even if they weren't your best books of 2020 or if they're not books you particularly enjoyed, I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a like. And if you want to see more of my videos, don't forget to hit subscribe. There's a new video out every single week. I hope you're all well and you're all staying safe. And until next time, bye!